Hey everybody, your friendly death investigator here. And today's episode, as you may have seen, is discussing uh, different kinds of examinations. Uh, before we get into that, uh, just a couple things. For next month, uh, February, we actually will not be having a discussion episode. And that is because, da da da, February is going to have uh, two autopsy episodes, and they're uh, related. So there's a part one and a part two. Um, I won't say what they are. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but I'll only, I guess I can say we could have easily made it a three-part episode, but hopefully you'll understand why we just did two when we get to it. But it is a fairly, uh, as far as like true crime cases go, it's, it's fairly popular right now, or it was. Uh, so we went ahead and did that. So you'll get two autopsy episodes next month. Uh, no discussions. We'll have March's episode. Well, I guess February at the first of the first week of February, we'll have uh, part one of the episodes, and then part two will come when the uh, halfway through the month. Normally, when the discussion episode comes, uh, so you are going to have to wait like two weeks, but you'll be getting two episodes. March will go back to normal. We'll have a regular episode and then a discussion episode in the middle of the month and so on from there, as far as I can tell from now. Uh, but just wanted to let you know that. And otherwise, oh, I did want to mention, again, if you're a listener, new listener, old listener, uh, always good to leave a either a rating or even more helpful, a review. Those ju They're just really helpful with the algorithms, as many of you may know. But I also want to just take the uh, the moment to say, uh, like, we, we read those uh, reviews, and we've got a handful now, and we appreciate every single one of them. Like, thank you guys for the kind words. They do mean a lot, and hopefully, and they probably have helped spread us to more people. So just the few have probably done a lot. So if you've done one already, thank you so much. And please, if you haven't, uh, do that for us when you can. Uh, thanks. So today's episode is actually brought to you by, like I do, like I have mentioned, um, if you ever have any questions uh, about uh, the show or just general questions about uh, death investigations um, that you want clarified or anything, uh, you can send them in. And today's episode is actually a response to someone who was asking, uh, someone who listened to the show, and uh, I'll just refer to him as uh, Darwin, I guess. This was actually going to be a discussion episode at some point, but he asked, and if you guys ask, I'll immediately put those ideas to the front of the line, and that's what we're doing today. Uh, he asked, uh, I think specifically his question was more, or during autopsy, is the head always opened, even if it doesn't seem like necessary? And I think his point was, you know, if someone was to like shoot themselves in the chest or something, and it's pretty clear that, you know, that's how they died, would you even bother opening the head? Essentially, that was his question. But more broadly, like the, the topic that I was eventually going to get to was uh, different types of examinations, um, because they can vary, not always, but sometimes. And yeah, this was just a good, that, like, that question alone is like, oh, that's a good segue into this stuff, into the more broad topic of uh, full autopsies versus not full autopsies. And that's something that I think uh, from medical examiner office to medical examiner office, it can vary what it gets called. Like some people, it, it, and it, I get, it all depends on the doctor. In my experience, like I've seen offices, you know, this is, they'll have just, this is a limited exam, you know, only the heart and the chest were kind of looked at, you know, the brain may not have been taken out. They would call something like that a limited I've seen some exams of just an external only where they look over, you know, the front and back externally, draw some talks and be done with it. It it all depends on circumstances of the case. And but what they were what they're referred to uh can change. And again, it it, it can almost depend on the for lack of a better phrase, kind of the snootiness of of the doctor. And what I mean by that, there's some doctors I've known who they will only ever do a full autopsy. And I, I don't know if it's just like an ethical thing or whatever, even if they have someone who comes in and, you know, one of those cases we've discussed in the past, like an elderly person with, you know, far along and like cancer, but for whatever reason, you know, they otherwise wouldn't have come in, but the family pushed for an examination. Uh, a lot of doctors would bring in that kind of case. And if the family's pushing for it and it actually wound up in the office, 
a lot of doctors would say, okay, well, we'll look at it externally. We might open the chest, open the head, and, and kind of be done with everything. But again, there's some doctors, it doesn't matter what kind of case it is. If it comes through their doors, it is getting a full autopsy. Almost, They almost look at it as the definition of an autopsy is this full exam. And if you don't do that, they won't even refer to it as an external exam or a limited exam. They'll just refer to it as an incomplete. I've heard that a couple of times. So when I say snootiness, that's what I mean. Like they, To them, there is no external autopsy. There's no limited autopsy. There's just an autopsy or there's an incomplete. But they do, there are uh, some doctors will say, okay, some doctors are comfortable doing limiteds or externals. Um, you don't see too many externals. They happen, they're fairly rare because by, most times these days, by the time a body does come to the office, you at least want to, at least even if you don't t take out uh, any organs, you do want to open up the chest, open up the head, and just kind of give, give everything a, a glance over. And so that would kind of, that's a, that would be considered uh, just limited dissections. But to get uh, to begin with, uh, let's start with just, you know, what would be an external exam. So as mentioned, external means like you don't open any of the body. Uh, you'd look everything over uh, front to back externally, and then that's about it other than drawing talks. And again, going back to like the elderly uh, case type, some doctors would look would get a case like that and look it over front and back and say, okay, there's no clear evidence that anyone like physically hurt this person. And we already know they have a huge medical history. And ultimately, an autopsy is just going to corroborate that. So all we're really going to do is just check out anything that if there's no physical trauma externally, then there's no real need to continue on. We'll draw tox. And if there's no answer, since there's no answer physically on the outside, if we draw tox and that's also negative, then there, again, you're following the logic and saying, you know, all other things being equal, you know, she likely died from the cancer that she was pretty far along with going by that case type. And I think we mentioned in one of the discussion episodes, I don't remember which one, uh, when doctors are drawing blood, the preference is if you're going to draw blood for toxicology, you preferably want it from inside the body preferably uh, from the iliac area, which is kind of around the, without really being able to like show you, it's, it's just kind of around the, the hip area where it sort of branches out into the, towards the legs. Well, I guess technically right, kind of right where, no, that's right, right around, right around that area. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, iliac blood is considered like the, the, the creme de la creme of, of toxicology. But some doctors are perfectly okay with getting blood from around the heart area. And again, that's why they go for the iliac blood. Uh, the reason it's considered so special is that it's further away from the heart. It's considered a, a, a better quality sample. But if you're not opening a body, if you're doing an external, there's uh, multiple ways to to get blood. And if you're not familiar with this, uh, like some like I know some people who do this might <laughs> you might roll your eyes when I, with what I'm about to say. But some people don't know if you're drawing blood like I would think most people when they think about blood or giving blood or having blood drawn, they think about it from, you know, veins in the arms, dead bodies, though, that. Don't think that. Uh, you never draw blood from the arms. You either get it from, you try to shoot for the femoral artery, which is usually a pretty good spot to get. Um, you can get it from the subclavian uh, arteries just beneath the, uh, as one doctor used to say, it's right beneath the clavian. Uh, but kind of the your clavicle, basically, in there. Um, and if you're really good, you can kind of, well, some people, you can sort of hit the aorta from the front of the neck area if you're trying to get that blood. Some people try to get really, uh, really try to show off their skills and get kind of a longer needle and kind of hit the heart directly and try to get that. And that's really hit and miss. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You're better off going to the other places first. That's usually a last ditch. If you're trying to jab a longer needle through the chest to get to the heart, you're, you've probably ran out of options by that point. So that's ba and yeah, blood you can pull externally if they act if they have urine to actually pull you can pull that externally. Um, it doesn't take it can be fairly easy to do again if they have it. If they don't, not so much. And then the uh, vitreous fluid, which is uh, taking a little needle and sticking it into the eye and you know, pulling out the the fluid. Vitreous is the eye fluid. 
So you could submit all that as your toxicology, all that you pull, all blood you pulled externally uh, without having to open the body, and that would be your external exam. If the doctor is cool with that, again, some of them might say an external exam is not an autopsy and they don't tolerate it. Again, I've said it a couple of times, check your local listings. Like some are okay with it, some are confident in their findings, and some just refuse to do it. And I, when they refuse to do it, it almost seems like they're doing it purely out of like an ethical thing, and that's fine. Can't really argue with that. Um, again, just it, it's all the comfort level of the doctor. A uh, limited exam take from the beginning, if someone was to shoot themselves in the chest, if the bullet exits and it's a clear cut, uh, actually that could actually even be an external. If someone was to like shoot themselves in the chest and they do an x-ray and they're, there's a clear entrance and exit wound and it's a pretty clear cut suicide, meaning this person had a history of suicidal ideations, had even maybe even prior attempts, maybe left a note, maybe sent some people some text messages, that kind of clear cut. Um, that could be an external examination. And I've seen a lot of times uh, corn, that kind of like through and through uh, simplicity, uh, some coroners wouldn't even call that kind of case in. They'll just sign it out as a suicide on scene. But for a limited, let's say someone shot themselves in the chest and the bullet didn't exit, uh, that would be, that would have to be a limited exam. For some offices, again, there, there's a lot of things to sort of go over in terms of, uh, and, and I mentioned this in previous episodes, so uh, some offices, if you've got a projectile or a bullet in you, they may not care. They'll just, okay, all other things being equal, like it's the same circumstances, this is a clear-cut suicide, and he's got a bullet in him. Okay, well, we don't need the bullet, so, you know, you can take him to the funeral home. It, that may, Some offices might refuse that. But some will bring it in just to get the bullet out. Again, some offices or offices and or state, I don't know if it's technically uh, legislation or policy, but uh, some states will say, you know, don't don't bury a bullet. So all other things being equal, again, clear cut suicide, still got to bring it in, uh, open up the chest or wherever and get the bullet. And sometimes doctors, once they open the chest, I've seen like they'll say, well, go ahead and open the head and give it a look. They probably won't take the brain out, but they'll at least give it kind of a once over a look just to sort of, you know, that's already being fairly thorough if it's that kind of case. So that's your limited exams. It could also be if someone is uh, over a certain age, but they don't have a lot of documented medical history. Um, and I'm just going to do broad strokes again here because there's so many ifs and thens to a lot of this. If you have a question, by all means, uh, obvious, I will get to it. This is <laughs> I'm based, I'm getting the questions as we speak right now. So, if they have limited medical history and they come in for an exam, sometimes the doctor, if they're okay with doing limited exams, will just say, "Okay, we'll we'll start this as a full autopsy, but if we find something significant, we might just stop." And if you open the chest and you find like severe atherosclerosis in the heart and calcified arteries and what have you, a lot of doctors will just say, okay, let's get some tox and, you know, close up and move on. And again, they may still say, open the head just to make sure there's no like visible or obvious stroke or anything. But yeah, that would be, those are your, uh, yeah, X. So that's the external and that's the, uh, limited exam. And then of course the main autopsy where, uh, everything's opened up, all the head, neck, and chest organs are removed and dissected through by the doctor. Uh, probably don't need to go into all of that. I don't, I don't know if that would be its own discussion, just exactly <laughs> how an autopsy is done. I, that would be, I mean, it's not hard and it's something that most, that I guess I could say at least when an autopsy is done, it's not always, it's not literally a pathologist like cutting everybody. Usually there's an autopsy or a morgue technician, whatever they want to refer to them. They do kind of what's referred to as the hard work, and then the doctor does the smart work as it, as it is. The hard work being kind of opening the body, you know, take, you know, a bit full evisceration, taking out all the organs and stuff. All that stuff can be taught to, you know, to a person as a technical skill. And then they hand it off, you know, each organ, each part. They hand that off to the doctor who does their more smart work, their more thorough dissections on their cut board and what have you. Um, so yeah, I don't know what all, like, those are the main uh, differences of, of examinations that I'm familiar with. Um, if you do this kind of work, you might be familiar with others. I don't really know what all else there is. 
Some might say, you know, why is there even an option for limited exams? Again, it can boil down to the doctor. Sometimes it boils down to the caseload of the office where you've just got a high volume caseload as much as you would like. And we mentioned this, I think, the first exam, uh, the first discussion episode where in a perfect world, every person who dies would get a complete autopsy examination. But, you know, resource management just doesn't make for that. There's just not enough resources to do that. So if doctors are doing like doctor, if they're doing an external or a limited exam, they're not slacking. They're just following all the evidence they see and doing what they think is necessary for the case. And sometimes they'll get cases like the elderly person. And again, just to not even for like a purely ethical level, um, though that could be part of it, they would just do the case and we're just going to do a quick full case just sometimes just because the family's complaining and you know at this day and age crossing your t's dotting your i's you just <laughs> as often as you can but yeah if they're if they're doing external external or limited they usually have a pretty good reason to be doing that they usually it usually kind of boils down to the medical history someone may have they're never just doing it just because they're tired and they had a long day so i, I guess that probably should have started out with that because you nobody when you I guess when you hear that kind of stuff it sounds almost like someone slacking or being lazy and it it's not really that at all it's really just we did what we or they did what they thought was necessary and found what they needed or had enough that they needed that they didn't have to continue so those are your that's your external your limited and your full autopsy uh, there are there are different. This doesn't really have anything to do with that. There are different techniques to how a full autopsy is done. Uh, some are done organ by organ. Some are done what's called unblock, in block, however you want to refer to it, where you can actually uh, you start with the neck organs and the tongue, but you can remove all of the the neck and chest and abdominal organs in as just one whole piece. And for women, that's basically uh, everything because their reproductive organs would all come out because in one piece, that's all the way down to the bladder and the reproductive organs for women are right there above that. So like everything would come out in terms of uh, neck, chest, and abdominal organs. For men, (laughs) I guess it, it bears mentioning, having said all that, that part of a full autopsy for men is the removal of the testicles. And it's always pretty hysterical because every now and then some of these morgues will get tour groups that come through and seeing the reactions to those folks is always, it always makes your day when you get to that point because no one, no one usually expects it. And it's, yeah, just seeing the reaction when they see someone like get, especially the way the testicles are removed. I'm not even going to go into detail how that's done um, because I don't even know if I could describe it. But it's not how you would think it would be done. Um, but they are removed as part of an autopsy. But they, going back, they cannot be mo- uh, removed um, as one whole piece uh, along with the rest of the organs if you're taking everything out in block. But I digress. Um, and I think that's all I got for this. So I'll leave that right there. Again, if you have questions, you can follow us uh Facebook.com slash autopsy podcast, twitter.com slash autopsy underscore podcast, Instagram.com slash autopsy podcast, and autopsy podcast at gmail.com if you just want to email us. But yeah, we post there. We usually post all our updates on social media. So please follow, subscribe, and please share. And please leave a review or a rating. Or just say hi. And I think that's everything. Yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoyed hearing all of that. Uh, and and if you want to hear more, well, there's going to be more to come. Um, but as a, again, always, uh, thank you for listening. It means a lot. And we will see you guys on the next go-around. Take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>